guys. So today I am going to try to make one of my favorite dishes growing up. And the reason why I say try to make is because I've never attempted to make it. Um, I think the reason why is because I've always been a bit intimidated that it's not going to turn out and I don't really know what I'm doing. But hey, that's half the fun and how do you know unless you try, right? So the dish I am referring to is cabbage rolls, also known where I grew up as holopshi. Now, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but that's how we always pronounced it. And when I say holopshi, nobody knows what I'm talking about. But, so we'll just go with cabbage rolls for today. So the first thing that we are going to need, and this is the part that scares me, is one big honking cabbage. Like, I mean, this cabbage is huge. You could just like lift weights with it, it's gigantic. So I'm gonna show you the rest of the ingredients that we're gonna need for these vegan inspired cabbage rolls. I just kind of made this recipe up on my own and let's get started. So for this vegan inspired cabbage roll dish, we are going to need one huge gigantic honking green cabbage, one small diced onion, two cloves of fresh garlic, I'm using one cut up portobello mushroom. Now if you're using cremini mushrooms or white mushrooms, I'd say about a cup and a half would do it. And I think it's just gonna give it a nice texture and a nice flavor. I'm also using a cup of organic tomato, strained tomatoes. You can use a tomato puree or tomato sauce. I just saw this and I thought it looked really good. I'm also going to use one cup of lentils. Now I am cheating a little bit and using canned lentils. Um, because I was a little bit too lazy to soak my lentils, cook my lentils. Um, if you prefer the ones in the bag, you go right ahead and do that, but I mean canned is so much easier. Just make sure that you rinse them really well. They are a great source of protein and a great source of fiber, so that is going to be key. I'm also using one cup of basmati rice. Oops and um, I'm gonna cook it in my rice cooker. This thing is a lifesaver. And what I'm gonna cook it in is one and a half cups of vegetable stock with a tablespoon of vegan margarine. So, <laughs> while the rice is cooking, I decided to remove the core from the cabbage, which we have to do, and uh, that was a bit challenging for me. So <laughs> it's not on camera because there was a lot of swearing involved. But I did get it out and um, I used two different knives and then I just started cutting it into chunks. And, um, but here we go. So what I'm doing now is I'm just waiting for some water to boil in a pot on the stove. And then I'm going to place the cabbage in face down like this, um, put a lid on it and reduce it to simmer for about 10 minutes. And while that's all going on, I'm gonna saute the onions and garlic and mushrooms for the filling. Okay, so the water's boiling. It is time to put this big, gigantic cabbage in the boiling water. Ooh. <laughs> and then I'm going to put a lid on it and turn it to simmer for about 10 minutes. And then I'm going to saute up my onions and garlic and mushrooms. Okay, so I'm just heating up some olive oil in a pan. Um, you can also use vegan margarine or butter if you like, but I'm just gonna go with olive oil and I'm gonna put that one small diced onion in there and two big cloves of garlic. Now you can modify this to how much garlic and onion you like. I'm not a huge onion fan, but I'm a huge <laughs> garlic fan. So I'm using two big cloves. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna saute the onions and garlic together in this uh, olive oil for about two or three minutes, just to get it nice and brown. And then I'm gonna add the portobello mushrooms. So now I'm gonna add the portobello mushrooms to the onions and garlic and then saute that for a few more minutes. And I have to tell you that it smells absolutely delicious. The rice is done and um, I've just gotta let that sit for 10 minutes. I'm trying to time all this in my head and uh, <laughs> I'm getting a little mixed up, but it'll all work out in the end, it always does. Okay, so the cabbage is done and I'm just gonna remove it from the pot and place it on a tray. Here we go. Okay, I'm very nervous. Oh my gosh, this is super heavy. 
Okay, and it said to use two big, like, slotted kind of spoon things. This is all I have, so I don't even know if this is going to work. But <laughs> it'll be interesting nonetheless. Oh, yeah. Okay, one, two, three. No, one, two, three. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I'm so proud of myself. Okay, so now I'm just going to let that cool and then we're going to remove the cabbage leaves. Yay! So while I'm waiting for that cabbage to cool, because it is like super hot, I am going to um, get my rice mixture ready. So um, the rice is done. It's done perfectly. I'm just going to put that in a bowl. And... Throw in the mushrooms, onions, and garlic. And also the lentils. Uh, I should throw in probably a little salt and pepper too while I'm at it. Um, you could probably put in any spice that you'd like. I'm just keeping it simple right now with salt and pepper because um, <laughs> I'm just trying to be on the safe side here. So this is what the mixture looks like. Uh, I think I'm going to have to wait for everything to cool down before I actually start to take the leaves off the cabbage and put the filling in. So we are going to take a little coffee break right now. Okay, so I'm just attempting to take the cabbage leaves off of the cabbage. And in the meantime, my friend Michelle came over and <laughs> gave me some tips. Thank you, Michelle, because I don't really know what I'm doing. So the thing that you have to do is you have to remove this little like stem hard part here on the cabbage. So you just slice it off like that. So I'm just going to go on the leaves that I've taken off so far and remove this because you don't want that hard stem part to be there on your cabbage roll. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'm going to remove the rest of the leaves, try to stuff them <laughs> and try to roll them. She told me it was hard so I'm up for the challenge. Okay so I just wanted to show you that once you get the hang of it, it's not as difficult to peel off the leaves as I was first expecting. Like I did wreck a few and rip them and stuff but once you kind of get the groove of what you're doing, um, they come off quite easily, see? So it just takes, you know, a little bit of practice because like I said, I've never done this before. So, you know, by the end of this video, I'm gonna be a pro. Check that out, mm-hmm. So the next step I'm gonna do, I peeled all the leaves off the cabbage. Well, not all of them. There were some around the middle and I was just like, I'm over it. So <laughs> I think I've got lots. So I'm taking some of this um, tomato um, puree and I'm putting it on the bottom of, I think it's a 9 by 13 pan, and this is what I'm going to place the cabbage rolls in. So now is where the fun and the interesting part is going to be, this is why I think I've been afraid to make them, is putting in the mixture and rolling them. So let's see what happens. <laughs> I just wanted to show you a close-up of the filling because to me it looks delicious. Okay, <laughs> so let the fun begin. So this is where I'm going to put in the filling and roll it up and we'll see what happens. Like I said, I really have no idea what I'm doing. So uh, yeah, let's just go with it. So I put some filling in there. I'm going to roll it over like this and then I think roll the sides in and then keep rolling. I thought it looks pretty good. <laughs> I'm pretty shocked. This is really honestly my first one. So then I'm going to put this in the pan, but you know what? Like it's like huge. Okay. I'm going to need more than one pan. I'm pretty sure. Let's try another one. Maybe these are just really big um, cabbages. I don't know. Okay, let's try it again. Oh, what was I afraid of? This is like nothing. Nothing. Pretty darned good. 
Okay, so I'm gonna put these in the pan. As you can see, I'm probably gonna need another pan, obviously, because these are huge. And uh, then we're gonna preheat the oven for 350, and I think I'm gonna cook them for like an hour. Um, I'll let you know on that one, I'm not really sure. Okay, so I ended up rolling 14 humongous cabbage rolls. Like, I don't know, when we used to have them, they were really little, so maybe we cut the cabbage in half, I'm not sure. But this is good, I needed two pans, obviously. Um, so we've got 14 humongous ones. So then what I did was I took a little bit more of the tomato, um, crushed tomato puree, and I mixed a little bit of the water from the cabbage, and I'm just gonna spoon that over top of the cabbage rolls. Now, um, this one pan here has a lid to it, so I'm gonna put the lid on it. This one doesn't, so I'm just gonna put uh, some tin foil over top of it. And we're gonna put them in the oven on 350 for, like I said, I think an hour will do it right now. And then uh, if they need to be longer, if the cabbage is still like a little tough or something, I'm not really sure <laughs> what to expect. I just want them to be good, that's all. So right now I'm gonna put them in for an hour and I'll keep you posted. Good thing I read those instructions first. So we're gonna be putting tin foil on both of them. Okay guys, so now for the moment of truth. Let's see. Mmm. You know what? They are really, really good. I'm super proud of myself. Now on a difficulty level, yes, this was a little bit difficult for me, maybe because I'm not used to it, I didn't really know what I was doing, but that's the fun of it, right? So you gotta try new things and see how it goes. So I mean, yeah, I would definitely make them again and maybe I'd have somebody help me, so maybe it would be easier. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you try this recipe at home. Mwah.